To understand the multivariate normal distribution, we have to firstly get a firm grasp of the exponential function because we are going to play with it quite a bit. In a nutshell, what it does is to increase very rapidly once we get in the positive side of the input, while approaching zero as the input tends to minus infinity. One interesting thing that we can do with this function is to reverse the sign of the input and if we do that, then the exponential function will decrease very rapidly on the negative side and will approach zero as the input approaches infinity on the positive side. Another thing that we can do that brings us closer to the definition of the normal distribution is to compute the square of the input value. This operation attains two things. One, it makes the function symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And two, the output of the function is exploding even faster. Finally, if we reverse again the sign of the previous equation, we obtain the bell curve, which many of you should be familiar with. Quite a mathematical miracle, if you ask me, because you can obtain such an interesting output with an equation as simple as that. And again, this shape is obtained due to the symmetry with respect to the y-axis. However, keep in mind that this is yet not the normal distribution and several more things need to be added to the recipe in order to obtain it. Firstly, we would like to have more control of where the center of the bell is, or the mean of the normal distribution, by shifting the x-axis. And how is this obtained? Simply extract the position where we want the bell to be, the variable mu in the equation, before raising the result to the power of 2. Then, maybe we like to change the shape of the bell. There are many ways to attain that, but the most simple and yet powerful method is to control the spread of our input variable by multiplying it with a constant. And if we do that, we obtain the following behavior in our bell shape function. We can see that it gets either narrower or wider as we increase the multiplication constant sigma or the standard deviation as it is known in the normal distribution. However, if we model the function in this way, we can see that the spread of the bell is inversely proportional to the parameter sigma. So instead, we like the two to be directly proportional and to attain that we divide the input x to sigma. Another not so intuitive part, at least not for me, is to multiply the exponent with 1 over 2. The last building block is to normalize our equation and make it a probability distribution. Because when you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, we don't obtain 1, but sigma multiplied by the square root of pi. So we have to divide by this term to obtain a probability distribution. And thus, we have finally obtained a normal distribution.